Good morning. God is good. And all the time. We're waiting for, um, obviously, the pastor to get himself together. We're going to bring up a room. We're going to bring up a chair for him to sit so he doesn't have to um, make us all nervous with that thing. Papa Wheelie. Here you go. See Tori? It's been, I don't know how many years ago, Tori was up here. He was worship leader or something, and we didn't have the ramp. And the district superintendent, Cheryl Bell, was, was visiting us that particular Sunday, and she was sitting like two or three rows back on this side. And he left this, the, the, the platform, and he just bumped himself down, and Cheryl's eyes got this big. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she thought she had Tori in her lap, because he just went off and went on his way. So... Um, we're not going to let you do that. <laughs> anyway, we'll pay no attention to him at this moment in time. Okay. Um, everybody needs to check the bulletins, um, please, for worship leaders, children's stories, specials, all of that good thing. Um, make sure you're not caught off guard when your name appears and you go, oh, my goodness. So please do check that out. Um, this evening is our fireworks celebration. We're going to be starting the program at 7, ice cream at 8, and then fireworks at dusk. I promise we'll start them sooner than 10.15, like we did in Peabody the other night. It was a little late, but um, they were still good, but it was, we promised to start them before then. Also, the prodigals, the gifted, and the um, the sojourners will be in charge this evening, so a few people could come a little earlier so we can get this ice cream set up and get everything straightened out. And then if you would be willing to stay afterwards, please, um, it makes it go so much faster if there's lots of people instead of like you know four or five of us. It just makes it, uh, the cleanup that much better. So if you would please keep that in mind as you are coming this evening. Um, many hands make light work, okay? Anything you want to add before I go on? The Truth Project? Yes. Good morning. Good to see y'all. Good to see you too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have uh, the Truth Project uh, study is going to be starting uh, next Sunday. And uh, just off the just off the top of your head, not mine. How many of you think you're gonna maybe want to be involved in that? That'll help us determine where we're gonna have it. Okay, uh, that's probably more than can fit in my living room. So we'll go ahead and plan on having it here in the uh, fellowship hall, okay? And uh, uh, that's going to be an exciting time. Now, just plan on it being an hour and a half, okay? Because it's we've got to watch a, a DVD presentation, which is really good. It's not going to be, hopefully you won't fall asleep. And, but uh, I've been, Don and I took this study when we were in Iowa. And it's very interesting. You're going to learn a lot. It's not just about the Bible. It, it takes all the disciplines and brings them to. It's actual. The topic is actual search for truth. And all truth is God's truth. And so uh, we encourage you to be a part of that. And that will start at 6 p.m. next Sunday at the Fellowship Hall. Okay? Does anyone else have any other announcements that they need to bring forward at this time? Okay. All right. Move on to birthdays. We'll move on to birthdays. Anybody have one? Anybody grow older? What? Oh. She's looking for her money. Yeah, Rod just reminded me.
successes. Okay, 15. At least. 15 years. All right. Well, congratulations. Let's sing happy anniversary. <coughs> happy anniversary. One more thing, I totally forgot. Um, we need ice cream and desserts this evening, so please keep that in mind as you're when you head home this evening and this afternoon. And would you please, if possible, take your dasher out of it? I know sometimes that's not possible, but if you take the dasher out before you come, that will help tremendously. And if you could mark all of the pieces of your ice cream freezer, um, we try really hard to keep everything together, but sometimes everything just gets to going so fast that that's not always possible. So if you take a if you take a marker and write on your like your freezer can and your lid before you start making the ice cream, that will work. Or a piece of tape, you know, duct tape with your name on it, that'd be fabulous. It would make us a lot easier for those of us who are scooping the cream to get it back to you at the end of the evening. All right. And did you say dasher? The, the thing inside. Oh. <laughs> I, I will. It's called a paddle. Dash. 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 Dance. 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 Get all the reindeer out of your ice cream before you bring it. Please. And anything else they leave behind. That's right. It's good to be back. Uh, I missed being here last Sunday, but I know Clint did a fine job. And uh, it's, good to, it's good to see y'all. Uh, and if you wondered what I've been doing uh, in my spare time, uh, if you'll look at my scooter here, You'll notice all that foam and duct tape, and uh, we had to rig up something because of the hoses. And so I got to thinking, you know, maybe I can work on a book, All Things Redneck. Because <laughs> a few years back, we came back from Iowa. Uh, if you remember, I put on that trailer, I duct taped. Uh, the big flashlights and I bought a red lens and I duct taped that for traveling at night on uh, uh, 35 so uh, and it got us all the way home and uh, I remember Mike Freesting thought that was kind of an ingenious idea so us rednecks we you know it isn't it isn't all uh, eating squirrel and uh, going fishing and, and just lazing around sometimes we put ourselves to real hard ingenuity so but it's good to be back and uh, I trust that uh, you are ready to worship the Lord this morning and we will prepare our hearts for that one more we got one more Only church thank you for paying my way to church camp I had a really good time and got to meet and make a lot of new friends I enjoyed chapel time swimming and bowling um, the theme this year was Mighty Warriors. Thank you again, Noah Schmidt. Yay. I'm so glad you all had a good time. All right, let's prepare our hearts for what God has for us today.
And just for your not your benefit, Bexley is down here taking notes. So if anybody wants to know what happens today, Bexley's going to be right on that. She's got a little pad and her pen right here, and she is ready to go. If you'll stand, please, for the call to worship. And this is responsibly. We hear the voice of God calling. We feel the Spirit moving among us. We know the love of Jesus. Come, worship God together. Come, let's serve our God who calls us by name. And if the worship team will come on down. How many of you celebrated the fourth someplace other than your house? Anybody go any place doing anything? I heard some places were underwater yesterday. How many had water over the weekend? <laughs> it's crazy. You know, people had all that water a week ago or so, and then I had no, I had no idea that anything was going on until I looked on Facebook, and Loretta's saying that they're barricaded at 140th in Sunflower, and she posted a picture of Sunflower going out of Marion, and Jerry said it was over 50 at, at um, Cedar Point, and it's like, my goodness, I had no idea um, that was going on. So I'm really glad that everybody is here today and that you can get back home after you've been here. Yes. You had four feet of wa rain where? I mean, uh, on one floor in there. There was, a, there was four feet of water over there? In the house. In the house. Uh, and I've never been in, well, maybe the basement, but since we lived there, it's not been on the main floor. Oh, my goodness. See, back there, that's really the Oh my goodness. So please keep those people in prayer who are still building an aquarium. Built in aquarium. Oh God. <laughs> please keep those people in mind in your prayers as they continue to deal with the, the water. Are we ready? Are you ready, Matthew? Here we go. From Psalm 19, 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world.
And all God's people said, <laughs> Okay. We are, we are going to do the song that we learned, well, we presented to you last week, so here we go. From Psalm 148, 14. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of, is, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord.
think but the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. much for the blessings that we have received. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. We ask that you would open our ears and our eyes to what is being said, to what is being sung. Help us to truly be aware of your spirit. And as it says, Lord, that as we leave this place, that we would take it with us to share with others. Be with Pastor Jeff as he brings the message. Speak through him, Lord, as to what you want us to hear. In your son's precious name, amen. And if the children will come on down, please.
You know, sometimes if something makes us angry, we can just walk away from it for a minute, right? And I know some people that when they get upset or angry about something, they just close their eyes and they say, hey God, you know, help me out with this. How should I react here? And not just let that fuse burn and blow up right away, but take a minute to think about what's making us so mad and what's a better way to react than blowing up, right? All right, let's pray, you guys. We're going to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for these wise words. Lord, I pray that we can put them into practice. That when something makes us angry, that we don't react like a firecracker and just blow up, but that we take a minute to think about our anger, and that you don't want us to be angry and blow up right away, but you want us to handle the situation differently so that others don't get hurt. Lord, I thank you for your advice to us, and I hope, Lord, I pray that these children will take it out with them and learn to control their anger and to look for you to help and also Lord just to spread this word to other people and to help others who have short fuses to learn how to handle their anger Lord. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this. At this time, the nursery is open for those two four years old and the children's church for kindergarten through fifth grade. Come forward, we'll take up our ties off. Yeah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to work. We know, Lord, that everything we have comes from you, and we are very much blessed. Now we give back a portion of that, Lord, knowing that you're going to multiply it however much it needs to be, Lord, so that others can come to know you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
this time we'll share some joys and concerns. Father, we come to you with grateful hearts. You are an awesome God. And you are more than worthy of our praise. Lord, I pray and ask that you would, you would light within us uh, the fuse of your Holy Spirit ready to explode in us. Just like uh, Dawn was talking with the kids about the fireworks. And Lord, uh, we don't want our anger or our temper to explode, but Lord, we want to... Uh, we want to feel a sense of your Holy Spirit just exploding and permeating uh, through our spirit, through our bodies, through our, our lives with excitement. And so we come to you with grateful hearts, grateful for the nation in which we have the privilege of living in. Lord, uh, we can still, so far, say one nation under God. And Lord, I pray and ask that you would help us to be that nation under your guiding and controlling hand. And, uh, and that is an urgent prayer for us today. Lord, we lift the requests that have been made here before us and we ask that you would just minister and meet you in every situation as only you can. Father, we pray and ask that those that are struggling with depression, that you would lift them. Lord, pour into them a new measure of your Holy Spirit that assures them that their life has purpose and uh, and you have a purpose for them. And Lord, I pray and ask that you would just minister to those that are struggling today uh, with depression. Lord, uh, there are those here today, even within this sanctuary this morning, that are struggling in their spiritual walk. And I pray and ask that you would draw near to them, that they would... Uh, with their eyes seek your face Lord that they would open their hearts uh, to the transforming work of your Holy Spirit Lord I pray and ask that you would be with those who are struggling with uh, physical need Lord we pray and ask that you would touch them with your healing hand Lord we, we ask that you would be with all of those that are in California near the earthquake, Lord, we pray and ask that you would watch over and protect family and loved ones, Lord, and uh, we just ask that you would draw near to them and keep them safe. Lord, most of all, we ask that you would bring revival to our nation, awaken us as a people. Help us to realize that the only future we can ever have is a future with you. Kingdoms throughout history, kingdoms and empires and governments and nations have come and gone. But Lord, as we're going to learn this morning, a blessed nation is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Lord, I pray and ask that You would work in our political leadership, Lord, that You would bring conviction upon them to do what is right for the people of the United States, but more importantly, to do what is right in Your eyes. Not what is going to benefit them, but what is right and moral in your eyes. Lord, I pray and ask that you would just do whatever needs to be done to bring revival to our nation. That may be the church, your church, going through difficult times. It may be that we as a nation go through a struggle. Lord, I pray for our president. I ask that you would give him wisdom. Lord, be with him as he makes decisions. And Lord, as he uh, gives him strength each day as he uh, comes under uh, fire. Lord, uh, I just uh, ask that you would minister to him, draw close to him. Lord, be with us as a church. 
continue to help us to have a hunger for your presence, but to have a deep desire to see those who don't know you as their Savior, to come to know you as their Savior, that they would invite you into their hearts and lives. Lord, help us to have a burden for our communities. Give us a harvest of souls, Lord, as we sow seeds of love for you. Now we ask that you would help us to be bright and shining lights in a dark and challenging world. Be with us throughout the rest of the service. Open up our hearts to the truth of your word, Lord. Draw near to us. And we will praise you for that. We ask that you would go with us as we leave this place, Lord, and this evening as we celebrate our country's independence. May we celebrate the fact that in that moment of independence, our founding fathers had the wisdom to know that only a nation whose heart is tender toward God and whose foundation is built on the truth of your word will last. And we thank you for that heritage. Help us to celebrate that with vigor this evening. Be with the weather, or we ask that you would just uh, take away the humidity. Lord, bring in a nice gentle breeze, a gentle breeze, that we might be able to gather together as a church family and, and with our community to celebrate the gift of freedom that you gave us as a nation. Now we ask that you would help us to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power of Glory if you'll stand now for the reading of God's Word. <coughs> this is Psalm 33, verses 8 through 12. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. And all God's people said, Amen. And I will start off by letting you know that uh, uh, since the surgery I've developed a drinking problem, <laughs> I just got to have water, water, water uh, because of the medication. My mouth dries out. <clears throat> Don't, some of you looked a little nervous when I said I had a drinking problem. <laughs> it's not that kind of problem. But uh, what is a nation in crisis? What does that look like, do you think? What do you think that looks like? Stop and think about it for a moment. A nation in crisis. The things that I've kind of listed, it looks like people who no longer respect and revere God. In fact, uh, the psalm writer alludes to that. When he said, let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. And a lot of times we 
Our leaders, if you look and hear what they're saying, they think that they are all that in a bag of chips. Sometimes we do that as well. We think we got it all figured out, and then along comes life. And it'll throw a monkey wrench into your process, and the next thing you know, you're seeking God's face, you're seeking His counsel. It's filled, uh, a nation in crisis is filled with strife, and you don't have to look very far to see that in our nation today, do you? A lot of strife out there. We're about as divided as you can get. A nation in crisis rejects God. A nation in crisis becomes a burden to its people. That's what a nation in crisis, I think, really looks like without getting into all the specifics. But you know, uh, there is some similarities between the nation, our nation, and the church. There are. Not just our church, not just the, our denomination, but, uh, but all denominations that are struggling. My wife says being laid up has given me too much time to think. <laughs> and she is probably right. But uh, doing a lot of reading, a lot of catching up. And what does a church in crisis look like? A church in crisis no longer has a reverence and a respect for God. A church in crisis is filled with strife and discontent. A church in crisis not only lacks respect and reverence for God, but they ultimately reject God Himself. And a church in crisis becomes a burden to its people. This week I was reading several articles, but I read one uh, put out by uh, the news service. Uh, the United Methodist has a news service, and then I am a part of a group called the Wesleyan Resistance. Uh, it sounds very uh, avant-garde. It makes me feel like uh, I'm a part of the French underground during World War II. All I need is a beret. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to see that, Brad, huh? That'd be kind of cool. But I hear so much talk. I hear it on both sides. But the reality of it is, it doesn't matter what the talking points are on both sides. What is truly important is what the Word of God says. And this week I was reading an article. In fact, I read it out loud to my wife the other night. Uh, uh, United Methodist Church in California uh, offers the services and they offer the liturgy for the Divine Feminine. In fact, they uh, and a list of the gods that they worship, the female goddesses that they worship, uh, they made reference to the Asherah. And they offer liturgy to the Asherah to Sophia, which is the Greek goddess of wisdom. And they named a bunch of other ones. And you can go to classes and, and uh, you can learn the liturgy of other gods in the midst of what is thought to be and should be a church dedicated to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Because there's only one God. There is only one God. And so, as I'm reading the article, uh, the minister gave the reasoning that, well, uh, 
we focus our ministry on God being a woman and the femininity or the feminine side of God. And so they said, we believe that God is a woman. And uh, I can tell you right off the bat that if that were true, the Word of God would not say He is the same yesterday, today, and forever because I haven't met a woman yet that will change her mind a dozen times in a 30-minute time period. Except you, honey. <laughs> but I, they discount the fact that Jesus Himself, when asked by His disciples to teach Him how to pray, said, Our Father, we live in a day where the church is in crisis just as our nation is in crisis. And there has to be an understanding in the, in the midst of this time in which we celebrate uh, the freedom that uh, our nation was founded upon. That freedom was entrenched in the principles of God's Word. And so when we begin to move away from that, we begin to move toward something else. When you move away from God, you know, I didn't, I wasn't awake a lot in science class when I was a kid. Well, I was probably awake, but I wasn't paying attention. But I did, I was there on this day when it said nature abhors a vacuum. And so if we begin as a nation to move away from God, we have to understand that we're moving towards something. If, if the church of Jesus Christ all over the world today is moving away from His presence, we're moving towards something else. And you know what? If you take that my, my pattern of thinking uh, to the nth degree, People, individuals, have a lot of similarities with the church and with the nation. Because people whose lives are in crisis have lost a respect and a reverence for God. People who find their lives constantly in turmoil and in challenge and in challenges, uh, and their life is filled with strife. Uh, they've moved away from God. And thus leads us to the next characteristic. Their life is filled with strife constantly. Have you ever known someone whose life is just filled with one drama after another? Their theme song is one that we've heard before here. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> And if you go on to the next line in that little ditty, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. That is, that is what happens. And so, like the church and like the nation, people can find them, their lives in crisis. And ultimately, they're one who reject God and they create burdens for themselves. Just like the church, when it rejects God, becomes a burden to its people. So what is the answer? The psalm writer gives us the answer. And he reminds us about the greatness of the Lord. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of, his, of the peoples of no effect. But listen to this. But the counsel of the Lord stands forever. And the plans of His heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people 
He has chosen as His own inheritance. Then it's a reciprocating process. It is a relationship. Here's what I've come to know. That the more I love my wife and sow seeds of love into our relationship, the more love I reap from her. That is a universal principle taught by the Word of God. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow divisiveness, guess what? Every relationship you have will be divisive. But man, I tell you what, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I like that phrase. Blessed is the church whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the person whose God is the Lord. His counsel will remain steadfast in our lives when we make Him the Lord of our life. i tell you what, uh, one of the... And, and being up here during the worship singing. Now, understand something. I took painkillers before I was here, and I still wanted to, I still found myself doing a little jig in that extra large wheelchair. That, <laughs> I told Rod, I said, it makes me feel small. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. <laughs> But the world needs to see a church of Jesus Christ. A church whose God is the Lord. They don't need to see a church that, that's God is, is the goddess of some other mystic religion that we know nothing about. They don't see, need to see a church who is all inclusive with other religions. What they need to see is a church whose God is the Lord. Who is committed to His His presence, to His power, and to His purposes on this earth. There is only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the only way you're going to get to heaven. It's not by uh, sitting with my legs crossed as if I could do that anyway. It's not sitting with my legs crossed, touching the tips of my fingers, and chanting, Om, Om, Om. If I sat with my legs crossed, it would be on my back, and I would be chanting, Oh, 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 somebody get me out of this position. <laughs> they don't need to see anything but the vibrancy of the all-powerful God living in and through the lives of those He loves and He loves you. The best thing that we can do for one another is to pray and ask God to fill us each and every day with a new measure of His fullness. It was close one. Best thing that we can do for our nation is to pray that God would put us in such a position that all we can do is cry out to Him in repentance and seek forgiveness. All we can do for one another, the best thing that we can do for one another is to pray for one another. Minister to one another. Encourage one another. Because we're the church of Jesus Christ. We are His presence on this earth. He lives through us because He lives in us. 
And there is the great inheritance that we still need to hold on to as a nation. Our nation has provided us with the freedom to gather just like we are this morning and worship the Lord our God. To shout hallelujah if we so move. To do cartwheels if we He asks us to. If He lays it upon the heart of the preacher to roll down the ramp like evil can evil with no hands, that's what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do it because He had not asked me. <laughs> but what the world needs to see is a church whose light is still lit by the eternal flame of the Holy Spirit. That's what the church uh, needs to see universally. That's what our nation needs to see. And your next door neighbor, your co-worker, needs to see that as well. And so this Independence Day, as we celebrate it tonight, don't just light a sparkler. Don't just light a firecracker. Don't just shoot off fireworks. But allow the Spirit of God to explode in you and burst forth and touch and amaze all those around you. Ooh, that's good preaching. You need to buy them on drugs. <laughs> that's what we need to do. That's what He calls us to do. Before we leave today, we're going to come to the Lord's table. And at this time of the year, you know, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, we, there's always talk, rightfully so, of those who gave their lives for our freedom. Those who served our nation, past, present, and future, by leaving home, leaving their loved ones, leaving the safety of their life, and going to some faraway land for the cause of freedom. The talking heads on TV would not tell you that. They, you hear them all say, well, they're going over there because we have interest. The only interest that they have, they have. The soldiers, the sailors, the Marines, the Air Force, the only thing that they think about is the freedom of our nation. World War I, our soldiers weren't thinking about the political outcome afterwards. They had no interest in the development of the League of Nations. You know what they had an interest in? The cause of freedom. Those sailors that lost their lives in a place called Pearl Harbor, 1941, they weren't worried about the political ramifications of our nation with other nations. They were there serving their nation because they were asked to. And inside the battleship Arizona are the ones still there. The Chosin Valley Korea those guys that nearly froze warding off communism. They weren't there because of some policy that was taking place in Washington. They were there because Korean people needed somebody to fight for them and to fight with them. The young men who fought in the jungles of Vietnam They were there at the request of the 
South Vietnamese people because they wanted to experience freedom like the United States. Every war, every battle. I'm not saying they, that there's not political stuff going on behind the scenes. There's always something political going on behind the scenes. But on the front line, you know what they're ultimately fighting for? The person standing next to them. Once a month, we gather together as a church family to remember a battle that was fought on our behalf at a place called Calvary. On a hill just outside of Jerusalem. Where the only Son of God died for our sins. That you and I could experience freedom. Real freedom. Not just social freedom. Spiritual freedom. We sometimes forget as we go about our daily lives just exactly what Jesus did for us at Calvary. But He started a new thing. He started, if you will, a resistance. A resistance to a tradition and to man-made religion. And he started a relationship. And he invited his disciples who were his brothers to partake of a meal with him. They had no idea. This was all new to them. But when he broke the bread and he blessed the cup, he started a new thing. that was, had the foundation on the principles that had already been laid down. But somewhere along the line, the Jewish religious leaders, <coughs> it all got, it lost its meaning. Today, I want you and I to celebrate not only the freedom that we have as citizens of the United States of America, but I want us to celebrate the freedom that we have because of Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. And He didn't stop there. He broke the hold of the grave and of death. And He, he freed us. I look forward to heaven. There was a moment last week when I really preferred it at one point. what the future holds. Because Jesus took care of my future at Calvary. I don't fear death. Oh, the process is never fun. Granted. But death has no sting, as Paul writes because of what Jesus did at Calvary. When He came out of the tomb, that was my tomb. It was your tomb. So I invite you today to celebrate the freedom that Jesus purchased for you and for me. Would you bow your heads? Lord, we ask that You would just bless us Bless each one here. Help us to be people who live in the freedom that You've purchased at Calvary for us. Let us never take for granted what You've done. And Lord, we pray and ask that You would help us to celebrate Your love, Your grace, and Your mercy at work in our lives. 
bless these elements today. Lord, bless the juice. May they be remind may it be a reminder of your shed blood. Bless the bread. May it be a reminder of your physical body and what it went through on Calvary for us. Now we ask that you would bless us as we draw near to your table. Fill us with your presence, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. I'm going to ask those who assist me to make their way forward. body of Christ given for our sins. salvation, the remission of our sins. And as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, may we remember the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do have gluten-free if you need that. I just ask that you would let them know or, and uh, we will get that for you. But I invite you to come sup with the Lord this morning.
No doubt the people said, yeah. Amen. Brent is going to lead us in a closing song. If you would stand, God bless America. <coughs> Some vim and vigor this morning. you and keep you. His peace be upon you. And we'll see y'all tonight. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.